This is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. Hello and welcome to Mojarto on Art. I'm Anu Subramanian. This week, we dive into the dark, insidious, and unsettlingly large world of art forgery. Then, we learn some tips and tricks about culinary art from award-winning chef Mahesh Sharma. After that, we see a scintillating rendition of Shakespeare's The Tempest in Goa. All this, plus we share some upcoming events happening in the art world with you. This is Mojarto on Art. You know, we spend most of this show speaking with artists, the creatives who practice and practice to perfect their craft. This week, we're going to talk about art forgers, the people who copy those artists and then benefit off of it. The thing is, in India, it's incredibly prevalent and also under convicted. So we speak with several experts about why. In the art world, fake is a four letter word. But one cannot deny that forgeries or selling fraudulent works at top dollar is common. In India, artworks by modern masters are regularly forged, but today, forgers will even create a work and sell it as centuries old. Anurag Tripathi is the author of Kalyu, a fiction thriller about the dark side of the art world. He became interested in the field after a friend of his discovered that a work of art that he got from an auction house was fake. Forgery market exists because one, the quality of forgers has improved over a period of time. You have people who are very well versed in the art who are in the underground market of forgery. And second, the fact is that the art infrastructure in India is weak. Debotam Bose is a world-renowned art lawyer. Because the conviction rates are low. So an authenticity does not just mean real, it also means how is something authentic to its particular nature. But clearly, it's risky to put out a work as your own when it is decidedly not. How common really is forgery? There is no official statistics in the market, but unofficially, if you talk to people, uh, almost 30% of the market uh, consists of forgeries. The reality would be we just don't know. We really don't know. But it is prolific. Provenance, or the hands through which a work passes, is essential to an art object's monetary value. But extensive documentation often doesn't exist for Indian works, particularly the classics. Art forgery, surprisingly, would exist only as long as there's a market and a market that is not documented. So, for example, if you look at a lot of European masters, they have catalogue raisonnés. And in Indian art, and artists in India don't have catalogues of their own work. We wanted to create a kind of a registry for paintings in India, similar to land records. And uh, it can be done, but before I could do this, uh, I needed the main components of the industry to back this idea. So the three main components, the artists, uh, the collectors or the investors, and the galleries. But we did not get any support from any of them. That gives tremendous opportunity for all bunch of peddlers and punters and people who want to make a quick buck, and in the absence of connoisseurship, to come up with fakes and forgeries. Several living artists have found forged works of theirs on the market. Krishan Khanna is one of the country's most famous living artists. I think it's very unfortunate the fellow who had to forge my work. I mean, why didn't he do it with his own? I mean, what's wrong? He wants to step into my shoes or something? No, I don't think he does. I think he really wants the money. To some extent, it seems, as long as we're paying for art, fraudulent works will flood the market. But then you could fight your daily life doing these things and stop painting yourself and uh, go on chasing forgers, you know, this is what it would... <laughs> Detective Krishnan. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, what are you doing these days? I'm just chasing my fortune. You know, what a life. Terrible. <laughs> For our next story, we focus on a great work of art that hasn't been forged, but adapted. Now, we travel to Goa to see Thalatum, a circus-style interpretation of a Shakespearean play. Full fathom fight, your little prince lights. Four hundred years after Shakespeare wrote The Tempest, a comedy about betrayal, ill-treatment, magic arts and revenge. Acclaimed theatre director Abhilash Pillai presented the play Talatum in a whole new oral and visual language at the Serendipity Arts Festival in Goa. It's an inspiration from Shakespeare's Tempest, a text, but uh, we are using very less verbal verbosity in it rather than we are going more for physical language. So it's, we are trying to find out a visual language with a lot of physicality into it. So there's circus and theater with magic and other elements into it. So probably the kind of vocabulary which we are using is subaltern. The Latum inspired by Shakespeare's Tempest begins with Psychorax giving birth to Caliban on a remote island. Also stranded on the island are Prospero, the deposed Duke of Milan, a practicing magician, and his teenage daughter Miranda, who have lived in the island in exile for the past 12 years. Their only companions are Ariel and other magical spirits, as well as Caliban, a native of the island, all of whom have been enslaved by Prospero. Prospero was originally the Duke of Milan, but his position was usurped by his brother Antonio with the consent of King Alonso of Naples and Alonso's brother, Sebastian. When Prospero hears of a ship bearing Antonio, Alonso and several of their retainers passing the island, he commands his spirits to stir up a great storm, the titular Tempest. He plots to have them shipwrecked on the island so he can carry out his plans to take revenge on his foes and regain his position as Duke of Milan. The play unfolds how through magic, intimidation and trickery, Prospero succeeds in his plans. He is finally restored to his dukedom, brings about the revelation of Antonio's betrayal and secures the marriage of Miranda to King Alonso's son, Prince Ferdinand. Thum may have passed, but there are so many other fantastic upcoming events happening in the art world this month. Let's check them out. Chennai, visit the Lalit Kala Academy to see Art Space Germany's inauguration. The exhibition is the first to be put together in a transnational form, based on foreign cultural policy of the EU. The exhibition follows the meaning and the influence that these artists, living here and internationally, have had on themes, media, and forms of expression in art discourse today. Delhi, don't miss the Glenn Fittick Artists in Residence Emerging Artist of the Year 2017. It takes place on March 25th at 7 p.m. and is the unveiling of 2017's Glenn Fittick and BestCollegeArt.com's Emerging Artist of the Year a prestigious residency which takes artists to Scotland to produce groundbreaking work. Mumbai, head to the Dance Theatre Godrej on April 9th to see The Artist's Garden, American Impressionism. It's a new film based on the hugely popular exhibition The Artist's Garden, American Impressionism and the Garden Movement from the Florence Griswold Museum in Connecticut. Delhi, do not miss Vibha Galhotra, Insanity in the Age of Reason. It's a show about the environment and our effects on it, and it takes place at Exhibit 320 in Lado Sarai. If you have an upcoming event that you want us to share on the show, then write to us at onart at ndtv.com, and you might just see it in this space. After the break, we're going to learn all about how food and art converge. Mojarto on Art will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 